Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 15th of September. Anti-terror operation in Anantanag enters third day. India pays homage to fallen soldiers. U.S. Congressman Chairman raises concern over enforced disappearances in Pakistan. And IMF begins first review of $2.9 billion bailout to Sri Lanka. And now for all the details. India paid last respects to Colonel Manpreet Singh and Major Ashish Dhonchak who lost their lives leading the troops in a counter-terror operation in Jammu and Kashmir's Anantanag on Wednesday. The anti-terror operation, which entered the third day on Friday, was still in progress till the last reports came in. Hundreds of people gathered in India's Panipat to pay their last respects to Major Ashish Dhonchak who was among three security personnel killed in action during a counter-terror operation in Anantanag district on Wednesday. Earlier in August, Major Dhonchak was decorated with a gallantry medal for a similar counter-terror operation in Kashmir region. A similar somber scene was witnessed in Mohali, where among the steady stream of mourners, the six-year-old son of Colonel Manpreet Singh bid a final goodbye to his father. Colonel Singh, a second-generation soldier, was the commanding officer of the 19 Rashtriya Rifle Unit, which is engaged in the anti-terror operations in Anantanag. It's a very sad occasion and um, both the officers, uh, Manpreet and Ashish, they were from my regiment only. And it's a big loss to the regiment and to the army. And um, so, I mean, naturally, I'm also feeling sad being from the same family. And we hope that people who have carried out these things, they will be sorted out soon. As a soldier, I would say this is a part of soldiering. Death is a part of soldiering. But the question is a media honorable death which he has. And we are proud of him. And we will continue fighting. Meanwhile, the counter-terror operation entered the third day in Anantanag, where two terrorists of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba are reportedly hiding. Quadcopters and drones were also pressed in service to locate the terrorist in the hilly terrain. Drone munition and rocket launchers were also employed to destroy the suspected hideouts. And one more case of Nipah virus was confirmed in India's Kerala on Friday, pushing the number of cases of the zoonotic virus in the southern state to six. Medical experts have found out to collect samples of fluid from bats and fruit trees in the affected region of Kozikode, where two fatalities from the deadly virus were reported earlier this month. Authorities have also ordered closure of public offices, government buildings, education centers and religious institutions in nine villages of the district, while public transport has also been suspended in the areas at risk. Kerala is battling its fourth outbreak since 2018 of a virus for which there is no vaccine and spreads through contact with the body fluids of infected bats, pigs or people, killing up to 75% of those infected. Moving on, U.S. Congressman Brad Sherman on Friday raised the issue of kidnappings by criminals and enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and imprisonment of women by authorities without due process in Pakistan, particularly in Sindh, as highlighted by recent protest. He affirmed on microblogging site X that the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee will raise these issues. Activists say attempts to highlight the human rights violations have long been repressed by Pakistani authorities. Despite being the wealthiest in terms of resources, a huge population of Sindh lives under abject poverty. And those who raise voices for their rights have to face oppression. Meanwhile, the constant onslaught of inflationary pressure has brought many to the brink of poverty in Pakistan with unemployment on the rise. A report. Persistently high inflation has put a severe strain on Pakistan's economy as it grapples with a depreciating and unstable currency as well as a widening current account deficit. The situation has shattered the people's faith in the government. 
Locals in Karachi blamed the failed government policies have led to the slowdown in economic activity and a subsequent rise in unemployment. 85% जो हमारी मास है वो 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 इस वक्त बहुत ज़्यादा तकलीफ पे और परेशानी से के आलम से गुजर रही है हमारी यूथ को हम सही तरीके से वो नहीं कर रहे हमें यूथ के लिए जो 60% है इस मुल्क की तो मैं ये कहूँगा कि हमें आईटी सेक्टर के लिए इनको सही अथॉरिटी देनी पड़ेगी Pakistan clinched an IMF loan of $3 billion in late June, but the measures to meet conditions by the global lender have further added to people's woes, with a hike in fuel and electricity prices. A caretaker administration is currently governing Pakistan, tasked with steering the country through to a national election that is due to take place by November. Uh, in co, in, in co, इनको फैसिलिट करना पड़ेगा तमाम चीज़ों में जिसमें मैं सबसे पहले कहूँगा कि खुराक की तरफ देखना होगा चीनी के लिए आटे के लिए दालों के लिए मेडिसिन के लिए वेजिटेबल इन पांच चीज़ों पर गवर्नमेंट को बहुत सख्ती से क्रैक डाउन करना पड़ेगा ताकि ये महंगाई की शरह नीचे आए तो गरीब तबके को गरीब आवाम को इसकी सहूलतें पहुँचें While the IMF has begun the first review of its 2.9 billion dollars bailout program for crisis hit Sri Lanka which will have to convince the global lender that it has fulfilled conditions set by it to revive the island nation's economy Sri Lanka was hit by its worst economic crisis in history when the country's foreign exchange reserves fell to a critical low last year The IMF review team would remain in the country till September 27th State Minister of Finance Chihan Sima Singh said they're collaborating with the IMF team to overcome the challenges. The bailout has helped Sri Lanka to build up reserves, stem a fall in its currency and tame runaway inflation. A Bangladeshi court on Thursday sentenced a prominent human rights activist Adilur Rahman Khan to two years in jail for disseminating false information through a report published in 2013, the Dhaka Tribune reported. In a report, Khan-led rights group Odikar had claimed Bangladeshi security forces killed at least 61 people, including children, in an overnight operation in Dhaka to remove protesters. However, the government refuted the claims and put the number of deaths at 13. Human Rights Watch along with 38 other organizations have demanded Khan's conviction to be quashed and called on the government for its immediate release. The conviction comes months ahead of general elections in Bangladesh in which Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina who has been accused of cracking down on dissent is seeking a fourth term. In Bangladesh And the Indian Space Research Organization on Friday said that India's first solar mission Aditya L1 to study the sun has successfully performed the fourth earthbound maneuver and the next maneuver for a send off from the earth is scheduled for next week. This maneuver marks the spacecraft's departure from earth commencing its approximately 110 day journey to reach the L1 Lagrange point situated about 1.5 million kilometers away from the earth. The mission aims to study solar winds which can cause disturbances on earth and are commonly seen as auroras. The ISRO started its new space mission earlier this month after the successful soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 on the moon. Well that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.